brethren and sisters. In the year 1997 AD, when I was a young man, 15 years of age and in my sophomore year in high school, and residing in Kisumu City, Kenya, East Africa, I actually died one night in my sleep and came back to life in the very same night that I had died. Inasmuch as I had died and came back to my body, I did not even know that I had actually died and had an out-of-body experience, OBE, until I shared my experience much later with someone else outside my family who understood what actually happened and was not a stranger to these kinds of real-life stories of people's true and unique encounters with supernature, be it through cult or occult power. It was apparent then, and even much later after I got confirmation from Jesus Christ of Nazareth himself, that I was a victim of serious witchcraft and occult power in my neighborhood, and had it not been for my regular and sincere prayers to him who is our Redeemer, our Lord and Savior, I would have been dead completely and would not have come back to life again. This out-of-body experience, OBE, changed my life forever even unto this day as it was by far the most pronounced beginnings of my acquisition of the gift of the Holy Spirit of prophecy, casting out of demons, healing, reading of heavenly language, and even writing in the same heavenly language. Psychic reading or prophecy through the Holy Bible amongst others. It was during this first out-of-body experience, OBE, that he, Jesus Christ of Nazareth himself, revealed unto me who Baba Messias Simeo Melchior Ondeto, who is famed and recognized as the founder and spiritual leader of the Legionaria of Africa Church Mission, truly was, is, and forever shall be. While I saw myself literally floating in midair in the bedroom that I was sleeping in, and my body was laying on the bed at the same time, I was seriously astounded as I had never seen or ever thought of such a thing in real life. In fact, I had never even heard of anything about out-of-body, OBE, experiences, or even heard such a phrase in my life, or come across such an acronym or abbreviation at all. Brethren and sisters, just as it is written in Hebrews 13 to 8 that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, it is also my testimony that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is the same forever, and that the miracles and wonders that he has performed for me in my life he can also perform for all his children who desire in him and his salvation wherever they may be, and in whatever situation or predicament they may find themselves in. Encased in this book is my story. Brethren and sisters, uh, I greet you all once again in the sacred name of our Redeemer, our Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And as usual, uh, in this show, we welcome you from wherever you are in the world, uh, from here in Atlanta, Georgia, United States of America. It's a good morning, but wherever you are in the world, right here, yes, yes, we say glory to God in the Most High. And we pray for peace to all men of goodwill and peace in the entire world, right? Yes. And we pray that whoever has not yet uh, received a true testimony of uh, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, like right, to make haste because the kingdom of God <clears throat> is truly at hand. Uh, first things first, I'd like to thank all my supporters and uh, all who tune in. Uh, I know it's not easy during this COVID era. And uh, I intentionally put on uh, <coughs> gloves to encourage uh, preventive health care. <coughs> my heart goes to all who have lost their loved ones and all who are going through this uh, strenuous moment, right? Yes, uh, it is my prayer, right? Yes, that uh, as the Lord may be clear and to us to the Apostle Paul and to the Corinthians on 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, 
There is no temptation that he will allow to come unto us for which he has not given us an escape or for which we are able to endure. I ask and always pray the Lord daily, right here, that whoever you are, wherever you are, in whatever circumstances, may the Lord have mercy on your soul and enable you to endure unto the end, become victorious, as well as uh, also bear your own testimony as I'm doing today. Uh, but first things first, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and open the word of prayer before we dive into the very meat and potatoes of the episode today. And uh, so I uh, shall pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, through your most holy Son, uh, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, uh, we approach that throne of glory with fear and trembling. We thank you for the gift of love. We thank you, Lord, that we are able to express that which you asked us to express the most in the ways in which you have defined for us to do, even in during these chaotic times in the last days where there will be wars and rumors of war. We pray for every soul and you made it clear whatever two or more be in your name, we are always there with them. We ask for the presence of your spirit that you enable us to understand the mysteries of the ancients and your word as you desire for us to understand them so that we are able to walk safely, securely and victorious in this dispensation of time, even called the latter days. We ask for forgiveness, Lord, for all our sins. And we ask, Lord, that you be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Yes, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, in the last episode, we ended up uh, by centering what we are going to discover <clears throat> today, uh, right? Yes, uh, in the essence of uh, friendship. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of areas of opportunity, brothers and sisters, uh, and this is in response to uh, they who support me <coughs> to make this show possible, right? Yes, uh, the foundational truths upon which uh, this show is hinged is um, teaching one or teaching one another and sharing testimony, especially on the essence of prayer. Okay. Right, yes, yes, yes. Due to those who have experienced marvelous uh, miracles in their lives, uh, who requested me for prayer every single day, uh, social media, WhatsApp, on my website, uh, telephone calls, right, yes, right, yes, the marvel and I always say of more particular importance is to focus on what Jesus made it clear in his scriptures. And I share my, my visions and testimonies here. To focus on what he told that woman who was going to be killed, was going to lose her life, was going to be stoned to death, okay, for a sin she committed. And upon saving her life, he exhorted her to go her way and sin no more. Okay, like this. As we center our lives right, to be more receptive to the ways of the Lord, that the Holy Spirit might move us in the ways that we desire for him to move us, right? Yes, it is uniquely expedient uh, to <clears throat> embrace the idea that environment plays an integral role, right? Yes, yes, in our success. And some of those environments, uh, concepts uh, and friends, Okay, and, and today we want to focus uh, <clears throat> on the life of Jesus Christ. Uh, I've picked up Mary Magdalene for a specific reason. Uh, many uh, already know that through the Holy Bible, I can tell many things right here yes, that are not as obvious. But I want to also give a testimony that the Holy Bible, the word in it, is actually a code. Okay, so there are a lot of studies that have been done and they're continuing to go on in different parts of the world, right? Yes, yes, but 
It is my testimony, brothers and sisters. If the Lord has not opened your understanding, just as he did to Nicodemus that night when Nicodemus visited him, he ain't going to go very far. Because in the scriptures we are told that everything in the world was made for him who is our Savior. Okay? Somewhere in the scriptures, we are told that everything in the world was made for Jesus and with him. So if you want to bypass him in understanding his work, where do you think you're going to do it? I leave that as a rhetorical question. Uh, but the reason as to why I want to tackle friendship is because uh, in the church today, many righteous have no happiness because sometimes they have something called church hurt. Mm-hmm. Or they have friends in their lives, right? Yes, who are not real friends, but friends with benefits. Even studies in uh, Division I universities like Harvard say that uh, for you to be happy, right? Yes, uh, you have to focus at least four regions that, <coughs> right? Yes, they categorize them as your relationship with your family, number one. Your relationship with your friends. Your relationships with at workplace. And your relationship with God. Right, yes. Today, as we speak, uh, there is a statistic that shows that uh, in a family setting, one out of every six families, at least here in the United States, do not speak to one another because of politics alone, political differences. One out of every six, just because of politics. It is my testimony, brothers and sisters, that there are more in the world that unite us. There are more things in the world that unite us rather than those that divide us. Okay? And as I go through the story of uh, Mary Magdalene, right, yes, uh, we see that the first time <coughs> that Mary Magdalene and Jesus actually meet was when Mary Magdalene came and Jesus was healing many people. Right? This account can also be found in the book of Luke chapter 8. Perhaps it suffice uh, <clears throat> to read the first two verses, maybe uh, Luke chapter 8. Uh, that would be enough to, <clears throat> to point out this uh, idea, especially to those who <clears throat> need their brains to be refreshed on the scriptures. Luke chapter <coughs> chapter 8 verse 1 and 2. Right. And it came to pass afterward that he went throughout every city and village preaching and sharing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him. And certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils. So he was with his apostles. And this is the first time Mary actually gets healed. She was looking for healing. And and I think in the Jewish culture, <coughs> being possessed by devils of that nature, that entailed that that person <coughs> had been troubled or maybe had a past life that was not uh, in sync with what uh, Christianity was all about or what the Jewish culture was uh, was preaching. Okay, And many a times Jesus was asked uh, why he hung out with, uh, with the sinners. But for the specific reason as to why many need Jesus today, Jesus made it clear unto them that they who are well do not need doctors. But he came for they who are sick, and he found them over there. On this one, I agree with C.S. Lewis also <clears throat> in many of his uh, books. The reason why I call C.S. Lewis is because uh, amongst the feedback I get, quite a number of people who actually view my uh, my show are uh, people who <clears throat> got strengthened in their walk with Christ right here yeah, through the works of C.S. Lewis. Uh, <clears throat> Life. And um, there, because there are people uh, in this show, there are people who also watch me who are not as uh, well educated, right? Yes, I try to balance, right? The two, <coughs> okay, right? Yes, but um, so Mary Magdalene, 
started with Jesus over there, we also see that at, at the crucifixion of Jesus, Mary Magdalene was there too. And that is also present in Mark chapter 15, verse 40 to 41, um, right here. It was a very sad scenario, <clears throat> right here. So Mary, mother of God is there. And Mary Magdalene is also there. And there are other women who are weeping. They are also there, right here. And uh, also, <clears throat> we also see that after the death of Jesus Christ, the loyalty that ensued between them and the friendship that was formed, the very first person that Jesus Christ appears to after his death was Mary Magdalene. Okay. In John chapter 20, verse 11 to 18, we see how that happened, right? Yes. But first, before I dive into that, so that uh, <coughs> I espouse or expound on another aspect of friendship that is relevant to our times today, right? Yes, I'd like to make this uh, <coughs> observation. There are many who are also not Christians who know more about Mary Magdalene and Jesus. And uh, so because the world is full of people who are in different kingdoms, it suffices for me, and I yes, yes, to mention something in passing, right, yes. Relationship with God, <coughs> okay, can sometimes be too <coughs> personal, right, yes. This is why in certain... Uh, <coughs> denominations uh, like for example the roman catholic some people even are uh, become celibate <laughs> that's why some people even become nuns some people become monks it does not mean that they have a relationship <coughs> uh, that uh, many will <coughs> call uh, you know intimate Mm -hmm. like between husband and wife, right? Yes. But because the world is full of many who think <coughs> of uh, perversions, right? Yes, there will always be, right? Yes, uh, those people who think that way because the kingdom of heaven is always under attack. In fact, Jesus made it clear to us that the kingdom of heaven, okay, suffers attack every single day but heaven takes it by force. So it is choice. Uh, if you want decide to feed their perversions, <clears throat> let them be warned, known that in the Bible it is said, as a man thinketh, so is he. Okay? But in this show, I'm promoting, right, yes, uh, a developing and even growing uh, of uh, one in faith on Jesus, towards Jesus Christ, growing to become more Christ-like than rather than the opposite, right? Yes, and and so let me read uh, John chapter twenty, verse eleven to eighteen. There's something I'd like to point out over there. John eleven, John twenty, eleven to eighteen, and uh, this is the time when Jesus had already died, and the apostles had come back uh, to his tomb to look, you know, to <clears throat> see him, view the body, and they realize the body has gone. Nobody knows the, the, where it has gone. The 12 apostles are already gone, right? Yes. And uh, so Mary still stays behind because this was her best friend. Mm -hmm. And see how God blesses Mary. <clears throat> right. John chapter 20, verse 11 to 18. Then the disciples went away again unto their own home. But Mary stood without at the sepulchre, weeping. And as she wept, she stood, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre. And seeth two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had slain. And they said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She said unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing, and knew not that and knew though that it was Jesus. 
I want to repeat that verse, that's verse 14. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seeketh thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said unto her, Mary, she turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Jesus said unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father, but go to my brethren, and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father, and your Father, and to my God, and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord, and that he had spoken these things unto her. Brothers and sisters, uh, something interesting here <clears throat> rises. Think about <clears throat> the disciples of Jesus for a moment. Okay? He had come and gone. Okay? And they should be the first people to ask where Jesus' body is. Where are they going? Like this. But Mary is staying behind. Right? Like yes. Like this. She was there for her Lord at all times. Like this. In fact, it shows, therefore, that she was more loyal uh, to Jesus than uh, the disciples. Like this. I want us to focus on how God blesses loyalty. Okay. You know, my brothers and sisters, where you are in the office of uh, the kingdom of God, or whether you are just a layman like this, Lord is looking for true followers, people who have unconditional love for him. Today, some people believe even who walked with you, even Thomas believed that Jesus did not rise up from the dead. Okay? Like this. Do I want a true testimony of God? Do I want a true testimony of God? Okay? Then I can see what Magdalene, because a true testimony of God in these troubling times, right, where the trials and tribulations will be necessary to cross certain bridges in life. Okay? I wrote this not only as a matter of divine <coughs> revelation for me to do so, but in my own heart, I desire that if somebody is struggling right, yes, with religion, like C.S. Lewis struggled, okay, the many intelligence people who travel, right, you to know whether there's God, higher power, you know, there's good, you know, just be a good person, you know, yin yang, right, yes, balance, uh, there are many names. Right, yes, right, yeah. and, and I testify unto you, if you do what Jesus tells you to do, taking the leap of faith, there is a missing part in the jigsaw puzzle. Right, yes. And I testify, Jesus Christ is going to fill in your life. I know that because he did that for me. Secondly, think about this. Mary and Jesus are talking at Mary. Once Jesus came back, Mary does not even know that this is Jesus for a while. Okay? This is the nature of God after he resurrected. Remember also in the walk to Mount, I saw it, I, I write about it over here. Right? Okay? How they knew that was Jesus is because they were doing the commandment of Jesus. Okay? Welcoming strangers. Do I follow the commandments? It is the following commandments, brothers and sisters, that Jesus revealed unto me who Baba Messiah, Simeo Melchior Ondeto, was, is, and forever shall be. It is my prayer, brothers and sisters, that as we close on this episode, I'm going to go ahead and proceed with another episode with Mary, Magda, Mary Magdalene. But I ask God to bless you, bless your family, and glory be to God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit as it was, is, and shall forever be, now and forevermore.
Amen. Be blessed.